In this video, we're going to talk about disease, and more specifically, we're going to talk about non-infectious disease. And one of the big differences between non-infectious and infectious was that infectious was caused by a pathogen, whereas non-infectious was not caused by a pathogen. But the problem is it can be somewhat difficult to actually find out what the exact cause between a non-infectious disease and its actual initial cause was. Right? So for example, with infectious disease, it's quite easy. We can always figure out, for example, we can use cost postulates, which are these four steps, to figure out what exact pathogen caused what exact disease, right? So we have a pathogen and we know that caused that disease. With non-infectious diseases, there can be more things that can cause a disease and it's not as easy to find out. So for example, we know now that saturated fat is one of the causes of heart disease. And we know that smoking causes lung cancer or is one of the causes of lung cancer. But that's a bit harder to find out because you can't just find a pathogen, right? You gotta have different kinds of ways to figure that out. And one of those ways is epidemiology or epidemiological studies. And basically in this case, when it comes to epidemiolog epidemiology, is we look at the, we try to find out the occurrence, so where it happens, how many people are affected, the cause of a disease, a non-infectious or an infectious disease, and also what we can do to prevent or control that disease. And how it works, there's different factors, different features that most epidemiological studies share. So for example, we should be collecting relevant information, so we will actually give, ask lots of people, uh, because they need, we need to have a large sample size, and we will be collecting relevant, relevant information, right? So for example, when it comes to lung cancer, if you're trying to find out what caused lung cancer, we're gonna ask them, how much do you smoke per day? Do you smoke? Um, are you exposed to passive smoking? Uh, what kind of cigarettes do you smoke? All that kind of stuff would be the relevant information we collect for smoking. We wouldn't be asking them, how much sunlight do you see? Because we don't usually think sunlight causes lung cancer, right? So we collect relevant information to find out the cause of certain diseases. We usually ask lots of people, so we have a large sample size. We sometimes have a control group, especially when it comes to case controls, and we'll cover that in a second. And we always have to analyze the data. So we collect the data, we collect that information from lots of people, but we also have to analyze the data to find out the links between cause and disease, and also between where it happens and how we can prevent it. The two examples of epidemiological studies are case controls and a cohort. In a case control, all we do is we have, let's say we have these 500 people here, and we collect information from all those 500 people. Once we've collected the information in terms of maybe who's got lung cancer and who doesn't have lung cancer, we will label them. So we'll say, this person had lung cancer, this person had lung cancer, these people had lung cancer, whereas the ones in white, they didn't have lung cancer. So we've collected their information, we've known who's got lung cancer and who doesn't have lung cancer, and then we do we analyze the data, we analyze the information. So we try to find out what do these people in red have in common. So maybe a lot of these red people might have been smokers, Whereas the people in white who were not affected might not have been smokers, right? So all we're doing is we're comparing people who are affected with people who are not affected. In this case, the people who are not affected are the control because these are the guys that we're comparing them to, right? So we compare the information and see what, what is similar and what's different amongst these two groups. The ones have lung cancer, the ones that don't have lung cancer. And that's a case control. Whereas a cohort, in a cohort we have, we start out with lots of participants. So again, say that the same 500 people or 500 people overall. In this case, all the people we start with have no lung cancer. But we check them again 20 years later and we find out what happened in terms of who developed lung cancer, right? And also then once we figure out that maybe four people developed lung cancer, we try to find out what makes those four people different to the rest. Maybe again, they've maybe been smoking more or they maybe have been exposed to more passive smoking or anything like that, right? So we're trying to find out through this information we collected and this data we've analyzed, why these people have developed lung cancer. And these ways are the ways we can figure out what the causes of different non-infectious diseases are. Right? So it's the epidemiological studies. And a good example with lung cancer. So lung cancer we know now is actually linked to smoking, but we didn't know that beforehand. So people didn't really care about smoking too much because they didn't think it was unhealthy. They loved smoking and they definitely didn't have any problems with it. But the first thing was established in 1947. And ever since we've gotten lots of different studies. So we've have heaps and heaps of studies on lung cancer and smoking. And the sample size, remember we wanna have a big sample size. Some of those studies that we've had have hundreds of thousand participants, right? So that's a huge sample size. Also, we always focus on collecting relevant data. So for example, we collect their age, their gender, the amount of cigarettes they smoke per day, the type of cigarettes, the years they've been smoking, or the exposure to passive smoking. So we've collected all that data and we found out, for example, the older you are, the more you're at risk you are of lung cancer, the more you smoke, the more at risk you are of lung cancer, the longer you've been smoking, 
the more ex a risk of uh, lung cancer you have. The stronger the cigarettes that you're smoking, the more at risk of lung cancer. And also the more you're exposed to passive smoking, also the higher the risk of lung cancer, right? So we've collected all the data and we have huge sample sizes in most of those studies and a lot of the studies. And overall, there's been a clear link between lung cancer and smoking. And those types of studies we've done, we've done both case con case studies or case control studies, which is where we're comparing um, people with lung cancer to people with no lung cancer. But also we've been comparing, we've got the cohort studies where they've followed lots of people around. And through that, they've established that 20 years later, people who had no lung cancer um, were more likely to get lung cancer if they've been smoking, for example, right? But the overall, the idea was through these epidemiolo epidemiological studies, we've established that smoking causes lung cancer. And we are very sure about that. So in terms of infectious, sorry, I was meant to write non-infectious disease. In terms of non-infectious disease, we know it's not caused by a pathogen, but we, there are different causes to non-infectious disease. So it's not caused by a pathogen and it's not contagious. Remember, that was um, infectious disease. So non-infectious disease is actually caused, for example, by either gen genetic factors. It can be caused by env environmental factors, lifestyle factors, or nutritional deficiencies. And genetic factors refers to, if, for example, a gene was mutated, um, so a parent passed on a mutated gene, or if maybe a whole chromosome is um, changed or mutated. So if the example would be Down syndrome. In Down syndrome, um, you have people who have misshapen um, arms and legs and usually have some kind of mental retardation as well. In their case, they basically have an extra chromosome. Remember, you usually always have two pairs for every chromosome. So one pair of chromosome, there's going to be two chromosomes in that actual pair. Whereas in this case, chromosome 21, is actually three. So it's an additional chromosome and, and that gives them that uh, disease, so Down syndrome. So Down syndrome is an example of genetic, as is cystic fibrosis and cerebral palsy. In terms of environmental, what we mean by environmental is that the environment somehow causes their disease. The example would be skin cancer. Right? Skin cancer is caused by UV light, um, so from the sun. And what that does is it damages DNA and that causes cancer. So skin cancer would be an example of an environmental disease or caused by environmental factors because the sun is causing skin cancer. Lung cancer can also be caused, can consider be, to be environmental. So for example, if you're exposed to passive smoke, a passive smoke comes from the environment and thereby it can give you lung cancer. So lung cancer can be considered environmental. And also heavy metal poisonings. Often if you're exposed to too many heavy metals from water or other sources, you can get disease and that would be an environmental disease. Lifestyle diseases, these are the ones that you have a control over. So this would be due to your lifestyle. The example would be heart disease. Heart disease is caused by, for example, smoking too much or not having a healthy lifestyle in terms of food or exercise, not doing enough exercise. As this would be how lifestyle causes disease over time. Lung cancer can be considered environmental or lifestyle because lung cancer, um, if you're smoking yourself, that's your own lifestyle choice. So if you stop smoking, you'd have less cancer. So in this case, lung cancer could be lifestyle as well. Obesity would be another example, which would be due to overconsumption of food. And diabetes would also be lifestyle because often in cases, it's also due with the, your actual um, food you eat and the amount of exercise you do. The last one is nutritional deficiency. This usually refers to if you're lacking vitamins or minerals, certain vitamins and minerals. So for example, scurvy. Scurvy is a disease which used to affect a lot of people, especially sailors, because scurvy comes from vitamin C deficiency. Nowadays, most people don't have any problem with vitamin C, but it used to be a problem. So if you don't have enough vitamin C, you get scurvy. If you don't get enough vitamin D, you used to, especially in children, you used to get rickets. Right? Um, so these are examples of nutritional deficiencies that were, were caused problems, so scurvy or rickets, and the cause of vitamin C and vitamin D deficiencies respectively. But the one I'm going to cover in a bit more detail would be heart disease, right? So uh, what I mean by heart disease in this case is coronary heart disease. Coronary heart disease refers to the actual heart vessels because what happens here is there's a blockage of blood vessels that, su that supply blood to the actual heart. The heart is also a muscle that also needs to have some actual um, oxygen and needs to have its carbon dioxide removed for it to function. And you've got these coronary blood vessels that do that function. They are the ones that supply blood to the actual heart. And if there's a blockage in any of those vessels, the problem is then the heart itself dies, the muscle die, or the, the actual tissue dies, which means the actual heart can't pump anymore, right? So first of all, where does it occur? Well, and how many people are affected? It's one of the top causes of death in general. Um, it's cancer and heart disease are the two big ones. It mainly affects people who are 50 plus, but it starts very young, right? So you start developing that blockage early on or, or the actual plaque that builds up early on, but then it gets worse when you get older and you have that 
full blockage. And mainly the developed countries, but some developing countries, but mainly developed countries are affected. Right? So this graph here, for example, shows that Australia and New Zealand have a very big rate of people dying of heart, of heart disease, whereas places like Thailand and Malaysia have, and, or rural China have less have problems because in their case they don't have access to as many problematic food or their lifestyle isn't as bad as, as many people in Australia have. Right? Because one of the actual causes I mentioned earlier, a big problem is we've got this plaque buildup and this plaque buildup blocks these vessels, blood vessels that, that supply blood to the actual heart. Thereby we have an increase of blood pressure and also we have a more high risk of heart attacks. So people with, with coronary heart disease tend to die of heart attacks eventually. And one of the causes or one of the reasons why this happens is, for example, we have, might have too much saturated fat in our diet. Saturated fat comes from animal fats. So that's one of the causes of heart disease. Also, if you're smoking, you have an increased risk of getting heart, coronary heart disease. Also, if you don't do enough exercise, and if you're really unlucky and you have certain genes, you're more predisposed to getting coronary heart disease. But you can see why that's called a lifestyle disease, because many of those factors, like apart from genetics, um, you have control over. You can eat less saturated fat, you can do more exercise, or you can smoke less. So that would be your, some, your actual cause of it. In terms of prevention and treatment, so obviously one of the big ways to prevent it from happening would be having a balanced diet, doing more exercise, and smoking less. And one of the main ways we can treat it would be either for drugs. Drugs will reduce the likelihood of it, there being a blockage, or a surgery where you basically remove that blocked blood vessel and use one from your leg, which is going to be not blocked. Right? So that would be two examples of ways we can prevent a heart attack from occurring. But this was just a quick video that kind of gives you a gist of what's going to happen or what's going to, what you're going to watch in the next four or five videos for this chapter, so the sixth context point for search for health. I hope that was useful.